Hello guys and welcome to the channel. Now today I'm out with a brand new setup and I'm out targeting pike on the local cut which means canal. Um, the conditions look all right, a bit 50-50. Had lots of rain recently, had lots of flooding, um, not only on the local river but the, also the local canal um, started to flood. Um, so we're pumping all the water that was loose on the uh, on the concrete around the housing estates into the canal and uh, the idiots weren't remembering to open the locks and uh, some of that started to flood but the water is very coloured due to all the mucky water that's been pumped into it um, so I'm out today using laws I think are going to catch in this mucky murky water now when it comes to fishing mucky and murky water when it comes to laws anyway um, people tend to suggest uh, rattling laws or um, spinner baits because they make a lot of uh, tight vibration. The thing is it's all about creating a disturbance in the water, about water displacement really. Um, the pike are, are picking up on the vibrations and the movement of the water to try and find the bait fish. Now a lot of laws that get looked over in these instances are paddle tail swim baits. Now, I've got a few here, these are 25 centimeter Svartzonka, Abu Garcia, Mick Pike, and these laws are great for this type of fishing. Uh, here's a pike one here. I'll show you how I rig them in a minute because I actually rig them in a, a specific way which is probably different to what most people would do with them. Um, and I'm rigging these with two large trebles underneath. Uh, the reason why these work so well in these conditions is they have a lot of water displacement with that big tail. The big tail rocks from side to side and it creates a big wave under the water. A lot of disturbance and uh, even in the coloured water, even though this law is completely silent, no rattle in it whatsoever, um, the disturbance of that water should be able to attract the pike towards it and uh, normally when you get takes on these things, working them slow, just off the bottom, they absolutely hammer it. I'm talking hammer it because when you're working them slowly along the bottom, the pike can creep up and they can inhale the entire bait and when you get a take normally, your rod absolutely gets pulled out of your hands almost. So right, that's what I'm using today. I'm using the big 25 centimeter ones. I brought some smaller ones with me as well uh, in a roach pattern. I've got this like fiery perch pattern here, which is, um, it's got lots of holes in it because I've been doing some fishing with it recently and the pike just demolish it. And I got this pike when I'm also gonna be throwing in between as well. Now it's time to look at my setup. I've got a brand new setup. Don kept complaining to me saying that my rod was too small. I kept using a six foot, uh, I think it was a, a Berkeley's, old Berkeley's uh, jerkbait rod that they don't make anymore. Um, but the thing is, I was getting a lot of takes from the pike, especially over the summertime when I did some law fishing. And unfortunately, I lost a lot of the takes. I, I wasn't even hooking up. So Dom said I had to use a bigger rod for that. So I've gone and got myself a bigger rod now. This rod is an eight foot six, so it's vastly larger than my last rod, which was a six footer. And this is the Abu Garcia Ike. Um, heavy law fishing rod this rod is rated up to 145 grams so it's a bit of an improvement on my last rod which was rated up to 100 grams so it's got a bit more backbone i've been using this and it's got a nice stiff action for working the laws but it's nice for when you're playing the fish it cushions the head shakes well and uh, it's absolutely fantastic and you know what it looks the absolute part as well so i've been using this a lot uh, to catch my fish with and um, I can tell you now, fantastic rod. And I paired it up with the Abu Garcia Ike reel as well, um, Revo Ike, and this is absolutely fantastic as well. I'll run the specs on screen. But yeah, I've got, well, basically it's all fast action because um, generally a lot of my law fishing is done in the autumn time, spring time, and it's when the fish are probably at the most active, when they're really sort of hyped up, uh, ready to feed, like in the autumn time. They feed a lot in the autumn, are ready for winter pike. And uh, in the springtime, they tend to, to have a, a bit of a feeding spell after the, they've spawned. So if you wait, let's say a month after they've spawned, let them have a break and law fish for them, you tend to get some really good quick action. And that's when like, you're lose, using a lot of jerk baits, a lot of swim baits. This is when you'd be shallow rigging these laws for working them shallow in the water. And um, so far, I can tell you now, this setup is, is, is easily the best heavy setup I've used anyway. Let's put it that way. So far, my hookup rates have been fantastic. You'll see in this video, the hookup rates have actually vastly improved. Before, I was probably hooking up um, to maybe 50%, maybe less than 50%. Uh, with this new setup, I'm probably hooking up to about 70% of the takes. Um, some of the fish I've lost close in, but they've been small jacks, which I don't really care about. I'd rather them just fall off at the, <laughs> instead of getting me all slammed up on the bank. But yeah, so in this video, you're going to be seeing me catch some of these fish on this gear. And uh, if you want to check out any of the, the gear that I've used today, um, follow a link in the description. 
So you see my rod and reel today, what I'm going to be using, and you've seen the lures that I'm using, so it's now time to look at the line. So I'm using uh, an 80 pound Berkeley's line that I'll also be linked in the description, uh, and I'm actually fishing that down to an 80 pound fluorocarbon trace. Over here in the UK, it's a bit of a frowned upon subject talking about fluorocarbon for traces for pike. Everyone uses wire, wire is great, fluorocarbon is great. I've just started using it as last maybe two years now. I've not had one break off. All you do when you get some fray in your line at all, any kind of rubbing, you just clip it off above where the pike's rubbed its teeth against it, retie it, and away you go again. It's, it's no big deal. And I'm also rigging that on a, a fluorocarbon stinger. Um, I've got two, I've got double treble hooks positioned underneath the bait to obviously increase hook up on the bait. I could fish a large hook out the top, but I tend to find using two smaller trebles as opposed to a large single actually works a lot better and you'll get better hookup rates like that. And it's a little bit nicer on the fish, I guess, using um, slightly smaller hooks, even though using more trebles, more hooks. So you guys are probably gonna be wondering how I rig this bait. Um, I rig it in quite a neat way. Well, I think it's quite a neat way. It probably degrades the life of the bait ever so slightly. That's because I've been cu cutting a cavity in the front of the bait. I've got these jigs here, which are the Fusion Snap Jigs from Berkeley's. Um, now, this isn't what they're intended for, but I found they work really well for this purpose. Is if you actually cut the hook off at the bend of the hook, um, cut a cavity in the bottom of uh, these baits, and also cut a tiny slit in the top of the bait for the line tie, you can actually push these inside the body of the bait with the line tie poking out the top and then the wings that are actually on the side of these stick partly out the side of your um, your swim bait and it really holds it in place then I've covered it in super glue the jig that's inside the, the swim bait pulled it and held it together tight with a super glue and it's actually fused and completely sealed it up so the bait is actually you can't really tell but there's there's a jig inside this bait and all you have to do to expose the line tie is push down on the top of that bait and the, uh, the line tie comes out the top there and you can clip your trace on and it's completely sealed up and hidden inside the bait. So it makes it actually really neat. And then what I've been doing is with my stinger hook with two trebles on, I've been clipping that onto the, the trace after it's been hooked onto the bait and then positioning them hooks in the bottom of the bait. And it's just a really neat way of doing it, I guess. Um, less things sticking out the front of the, the bait to get tangled up on weed and things. Um, but if I was fishing summertime, I'd just be fishing a shallow screw or something like that. Or if the water was even clear, I'd probably just fish a shallow screw. But seeing as I'm wanting this bait to come along the bottom, it's just a really neat way of doing it. So I'm going to st <laughs> stick to doing it. I'm actually going to use these on my smaller baits as well, I think. But um, these are more for my perch fishing, let's put it that way. <laughs> Got a fish, got a fish. It's only a small jack, but like I said, in this mucky water, Parker got a feed. Here's a little guy. Take my glove off, even with this little guy. He's got a fish carries paramount. The gloves are only going to get caught in the hooks anyway. Hey, the hook just slipped out there. Nice little pikey, look at that pale colours because of how mucky the water is. It's good when the unhook sounds like that, <sighs> Good start. Not a monster, but it'll do.
got a fish. Nice fish. Oh no, it's still a jack. Oh, come on. <laughs> Other thing you shouldn't do when you're fishing or law fishing is, which I always do, and I always, it always results in loss. What is a fish? There's a fish. That's a good one. Better than them tiny ones there. Oh, yes. Made sure that one was up. It inhaled the bait, so he just popped out his mouth, really. Oh, yes. God, he's putting up an account for himself. Always got himself tangled up in my braid. Got to be careful there. Don't want to... Don't want to pull them too tight when that happens. Right in the scissor. A bit better than the tiny jags have been catching. That's got a bigger mouth on it. <sighs> oh, look at that. Pinched them out. Using barbless hooks. I've been for a little while now. Got a waist sling, I'm actually gonna put him in and rest him in the edge. And I'm gonna set on my big camera. So even though it's not a monster, it is a nice fish to catch on this gear. It'd be nice to take a look at him. Here we go, water over nicely in the mat. Keep it nice and protected. This fish has got a lot of battle scars, probably from where people have had it all up at Bath. There's a uh, few scars on its flanks. That's what you get for letting them rest. There we go. Beautiful pike. Probably about six pound, something like that, six, seven pound. Nice size fish. It doesn't look that fat, but it's got a bit of weight to it and it's quite chunky at its front end. Really nice looking fish. Solid, give me a right good take. And uh, I'm well pleased with that. The fish is freezing cold, it's really cold water. But if you work the laws right, use the right laws right gear you'll be able to sneak these fish out from where they're hiding and get some wicked takes right i'll get him back in the water and uh, we'll watch him swim away what a beautiful looking fish especially in the bridges and things Fish on. Fish on. Oh yes. Absolutely crushed it. I knew there'd be one under this bridge. This rod's really good for this kind of thing. Just walk him out to a place where I can easily land it. Really strong fish, even though it's only small. In the murky water, I've been fishing all of about 10 minutes and uh, the pulse of this bait drew this pike out from the dark murky waters underneath the bridge it only just skin up come on tell i'm doing whoa gotta be careful there's a couple of trailing troubles there right let's try my left end i'm actually better at training with my left end because i'm used to unhooking with me right there we go nice hook hold lug Right in the corner, there's that big chunky bait, big paddle tail, drew that out from under this bridge. Probably a fish of scraping four pound, but still, lovely looking fish. Got some big plies and I've got some small plies and I only need my small plies for this one. Absolutely like, near no! Are you fucking kidding me? Oh, that was that eight pound I was on about. Oh my god, that gave me a shock. Right as I'll bring the bait out of the water, I don't think you got. I don't think I got that on camera. I don't think I got that on camera. 
Oh, honestly, the camera just ran out of power. I'd put it on charge. I've got a charger pack with me and uh, I've got a little bit of power in it and whack, a bike absolutely crushed it. I can't believe it. Right when the GoPro had run out of power as well. It's not a bad size, probably a five, six pounder. He'll definitely do. Literally just pulled the camera out of my pocket, turned it on, whacked it on. If it won't come off, it's a nice size pipe. And it's a shame I didn't catch it on the GoPro. The take was insane. Nice firm grip on it. Just skin up there. There we go. Barbless hooks pop straight out. It's exactly how we like it. Really nice fish. Probably maybe a bit bigger, similar size to the last one I had. Maybe about six pound, seven pound. Yeah, I'd say seven pound all day. That big head on it, big jaw on it, big sharp teeth on it. Look. I'll put it in the sling. We'll get a better look at it. Biggest one so far. There we are, beautiful pike. I've not unhooked it yet, because both the hooks was positioned well in the mouth. So I'm gonna unhook it now. It's a good size fish. Over eight pound. He opened his mouth up. There's one up there. Like I say, I've made both these barbless, crushed the barbs. I've got bigger plies with me, but I don't quite need them. There we go, second hook's out. Well, yeah, that's a big one, isn't it? Uh, it's not bad. <laughs> what do you mean not bad? It's <laughs> pretty good. Yeah, yeah it's alright, isn't it? <laughs> there you go, beautiful pike. This fish is probably eight pound, maybe nine pound. It's got a big belly on it. Like it's clearly eating something big. So it's got quite a bit of weight to it. Uh, absolute stunner. Nailed that bait. Just turned the DSLR on for it as well. Absolute beauty. I'm sure this uh, will go even bigger in winter. It's got a big belly on it. But yeah, it's definitely an eight, nine pound fish I'd say. Not quite a 10 pound. Absolute beauty. Caught on that. Mick Pike from Abu Garcia. Absolute stunner. Get it rested, get it back. Absolute beauty. Got a fish. We got a fish. It's only a small one. Yeah. He crushed it though. Well, I can hardly chin that because uh, one hook's in that, that says a look, the other hook's come through the other side. <laughs> so I can't really chin it. Let's get that hook out first. Bring the trace around. There we go. I can get it under the chin now. 
there we go. Really solid hooked, little jack bike. Gotta be careful here, because he's only a little guy, I don't wanna hurt his teeth. See there, loads of sharp teeth, but they're very fine on small pike. Gotta be careful. There we go. Look at that. Bait was almost as big as it. <laughs> Half the size of it, look. So guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed that video. I really enjoyed filming it. Got plenty of fish. Um, lots of action actually off camera. Unfortunately, the GoPro ran out. But uh, yeah, really, really thoroughly enjoyed myself. Um, like I say, if you want to check out anything I used in this video, go to the description below. Also, there'll be a link to my Instagram page down there as well. It's time for me to go get a shave because the beard's getting a bit long. And I'll catch you guys later.